Welcome everyone. Welcome back again. These days go by so fast. I feel like we were all just together just a moment ago, but here we are again. Um, welcome to the perfect tips and tricks with OESD. Um, I'm Carrie, and um, this is episode number 11 already, which is fantastic. Thank you guys for joining me uh, every day. Um, as a reminder, we are broadcasting every day uh, at 1 p.m. Central Time. Um, I am here in beautiful, sunny Illinois, so we are on Central Time. Um, we will be broadcasting live from our Facebook pages, both from our OESD page and from our Scissor Tail Stitches page. Um, and then after these episodes, you can watch uh, either on Facebook recorded or we will post to our YouTube channel, um, which will be there in you know about an hour afterwards. Um, for you guys to watch. So today we uh, have Tamara Evans back with us again. She is going to be showing us, um, teaching us all about quilting in the hoop, which is a topic uh, we hear a lot of questions about. Um, so many of us want to use um, our embroidery machines to quilt. Um, we were making projects and you know, not everybody's a free motion quilter. Um, and so we have so many options as far as quilting designs. Tamara is gonna talk to us all about what kind of designs we have and how they go together and I will work on not stealing her thunder. So let me bring up Tamara. Tamara, welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. So and I, I, I apologize for the siren in the background. It's almost done. Um, can't it's hear it. It's testing day for, um, hopefully it's a test of the emergency system. Anyway, uh, it should be over in a second. Um, I'm thrilled to be here and talk about one of my favorite subjects, which is quilting in the hoop um, with your embroidery machine, because I am, uh, this is how I do free motion. Oh, um, that is about as close as I get to it. Um, I've tried, but um, I love, there's so many designs that you can use to quilt your quilts that uh, it's just too fun not to do it with your embroidery machine. So let me show you a few samples. Then I'm going to switch over to um, a slideshow to go through a little bit more details. Here's a really recent one. This is floral quilting. And basically, we took one design that connects um, on the sides and did it three times, although we flipped it on the center one. I don't know if y'all can tell that or not. And this is a single straight stitch design. That one is. Uh, then we have another table runner that is done with a uh, continuous line quilting, I believe is the name of it. My tab is not on here. Um, and just with flipping different designs and connecting the borders on the sides. Again, that's a single run design. This one is from Basics by Urban Elements. Um, the design number is 80286. And there's actually a lesson in there on how to do this placemat. Um, and we'll teach you edge to edge quilting step by step. So that's a good resource for you. Uh, another placemat, because placemats are easy to travel with as samples. That's why I've got so many of them. This one is actually triple straight stitch. So you get a little bit more definition with it. This one was also done on Bozel. Um, which is great for placemats because it really shows off your stitching very nicely. And then finally, this one's a little bit bigger. This is another edge to edge. I'm trying not to stick myself with the pins that are holding the binding on. Um, and one design all the way across it. And I'm going to show you how to do this one today. And that is also a single straight stitch. So, Let's get started. Let me just share my screen with you right here and share. Okay, Carrie, am I good to go? You are great. Perfect. Okay, good to know. Um, so, quilting with an embroidery machine. I can get this. There we go. So, there's different types of quilting designs. And actually, it's funny, I know um, Amanda talked yesterday about pantographs. I'll give you a little bit of history. A pantograph was originally a hinged tool. Um, and if you've ever been to Monticello, um, Thomas Jefferson's home, you might have seen one. 
where they put a, he had a pin on one side and a pin in the cinch thing on the other and would write with it and it would duplicate what he was doing on the other piece of paper. So they took that same principle and applied it to long arm quilting machines by having pantographs that they would trace and then it would quilt as you go. And so the name pantograph just kind of got attached to quilting designs. Not that we're going to trace these. We are going to let the machine stitch it out completely. But here are some samples of single stitch designs. You can have designs that are completely contained in one uh, unit, like a square or a circle. So those would go nicely in different blocks of those sizes. Uh, they are very scalable, by the way. So um, if, if you have, let me qualify that. They are scalable if you have a machine or software that recalculates the stitches. You don't want to take a single stitch design and, you know, take it up 400% and have stitches that are you know, half an inch long. Um, although they'd show up really well, they're not going to hold up very well. They'll get snagged very easily. So just watch how you recalculate those. Um, and see if the stitch count changes is a good way to know if it recalculated the stitches. So here's some other ones. Here's a corner. Um, there are borders that connect and corners for the borders that connect. Um, lots of different designs. And here are some samples of those actually stitched out on things. These are all single stitched onto the fabrics. And then triple stitch is another type of quilting design. A lot of our designs are done both in single stitch and triple stitch. Oftentimes it will tell you in the description of the design, uh, triple stitch. For example, a lot of our urban elements, um, the ones that um, we draw in-house and Jessica Schick, some other quilting designs may have 60 designs, you know, or 30 unique designs, but 60 embroidery designs on there because they come in both single run and triple run format, which to me is ideal because that way, if I really want the quilting to stand out and pop, I use a triple run, a triple stitch design so that, and it, it's not where it goes over it and goes over the whole thing again and the whole thing again. It does three stitches together. That's the best way because it goes forward, back, forward, forward, back, forward, kind of like a waltz um, or a bean stitch, if you will. And that way, your registration is much less likely to get off. If you were to go over that two times or three times, there would be a possibility that they wouldn't necessarily line up exactly, especially if you were using a heavier batting, which, you know, could shift a little. Uh, so here's examples of some triple straight stitch designs. Uh, there's some Urban Elements monsters there that are so cute. Those also come in a single run. Uh, the floral quilting, like was on my table runner. Uh, Celtic knots, those are so pretty. Um, but those are really difficult to do as a single run. Those are all in a, a triple run format um, because of the way that they overlap and all of that. Um, with a continuous line like the moose and bears on the bottom center, if you start on the left side, you can actually trace that all the way through and end up on the other side without ever picking up your finger. So that is a continuous run. It goes through one time and does all of the stitches. In this case, um, a triple stitch, uh, but I think that one also comes in the single run stitch. And then you have other ones that are just really pretty that actually just pop on a quilt or even to do a whole cloth quilt with beautiful quilting designs um, would be very elegant. And of course, we can't forget Tula Pink down here in the bottom with the fun squirrels. Uh, now, that one is a little bit different. While that is continuous run, there are a few jump stitches in there where you jump from the corners over to the squirrel and then to the flower in the center. This is actually two separate designs I put together um, that butt up to each other to make a complete design. Uh, so jump stitches are things that we tend to avoid in quilting, but sometimes it's just too cute that you just have to do it anyway. So here are some examples of triple run stitching. So 
The next thing that we'll talk about are the supplies and notions that I think are really handy for quilting. First of all, stable stick template sheets. This is a printable sheet. You can print a template. Um, all software out there will print it. There are free softwares out there you can ask your dealer about um, to if you don't have the means to print a template. Uh, print a template. You want the crosshairs on there, and you want to make sure that if it's not printed on the template that you mark what the top of the design is. You know, put a little arrow to the top. Because as you move those around your quilt, it can get confusing depending on the design. The other thing I highly recommend is 505 spray adhesive. And we'll talk about how we use that in just a minute. Then needles for quilting, I use a 7511 or an 8012 sharp embroidery needle. Um, organ needles come in both sharp and ballpoint. They're not universal. I like the sharpness because it will penetrate all three layers of my quilt sandwich and make nice clean stitches. Um, and it's got that longer scarf than I, so as it's stitching fast, it doesn't shred the thread. I typically use isocord thread in mine. You can use whatever kind of thread you like. Um, adjust your needle accordingly if you're using a, a heavier weight thread or a cotton thread. Cotton threads tend to give you a little bit more lint and you have some lint from the batting too, so you remember to clean your machine frequently. Um, and you want to match your bobbin thread to your top thread. Um, you don't have to use a thinner thread for the, for the bobbin, although your bobbin would last longer possibly with that. Um, but I like to match the color and the weight of it. Then snips to remove threads and optionally a removable fabric marker. All right, so your machine settings. You want to turn the trimming function off. You also want to turn off the tie-in tie off option where it adds a tie in and a tie tie off at the end, you know, the beginning and the end of your stitches. OESD designs include these and you should probably check if you're using another brand of design uh, if it already has a tie in and tie off on it. Um, if so, look at it and see what kind it is. With OESDs, they are done over the stitches like when it starts off with a couple little run stitches, it'll go back over those. So you don't have what looks like a knot there, but it's tied it off so it's not going to um, unravel. And it does the same thing at the end. Uh, thread the machine for sewing, not embroidery. So this is a little different for us. Using a hoop and not threading it, you know, through the tail or however it is that you, or the special bobbin case that you use for embroidery. You want to use your regular sewing case. If you look to the right, you will see the embroidery tension versus the sewing tension. Sewing tension is balanced where the knot's kind of in the center of the fabric. Uh, whereas embroidery tension, it's pulling your top thread to the back. Now, embroidery tension is good if you think you're going to have to rip out the design because it's much easier to get rid of it that way. But if you want the back of your quilt to look as nice as the front, I do recommend a balanced sewing tension. Um, so use that instead of your embroidery uh, settings. So Tamara, when you say to thread for embroidery, some machines have a difference of threading and some don't. So that would really depend on your machine, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Many Sometimes. machines don't, there's not necessarily a difference, but some have an embroidery bobbin case or, you know, there is a difference in the way you actually physically thread the machine. So that's what you mean by that. Yes, exactly. Thanks for clarifying. Yes. Um, and then I use the same thread in the top and the bobbin. So it just makes it look really nice. Um, then select your design. And we size it. We want to because we have these big hoops now. We're tempted to make it as big as our biggest hoop. And then, wow, that would only take, you know, six hoopings for a child, uh, you know, a baby quilt. Um, kind of resist that urge a little bit. You can make it large larger to fit the hoop, but you need to leave some wiggle room for connecting the designs. You can see here with this um, design from Jessica Schick's collection, Quilting by Design, it's called Party Streamers, isn't that fun? Um, I put nine of them together on the right-hand side and highlighted the center one in red 
So you can see where they connect to each other and it's just across the rows. And then they kind of marry together from row to row. Um, those are all stacked just one on top of the other um, in sequence with about the same amount of space between them. So um, take a clue from that and, and leave yourself enough room so that if you are connecting, you've got room to do that. Then you want to print a template. Now you'll print these on staple stick template sheets. And the reason I like those is uh, it's got a pressure sensitivity on the back of them and you can peel that off and you have a sticky template that will last you probably through the whole quilt. Uh, it's reusable, repositionable, but it tells you exactly where, you know, you can audition exactly where that design is going to land. When we do bigger designs like this one here, um, it may print on two sheets of, of template paper because it's too big to print on just one. So you can cut it out and then it has places for you to line them up together. All templates will do this or all programs will do this type of thing. Not all of them put the arrow on. So remember to mark the top of your design with an arrow, but you can see here where the center of the design is and which way is up. And you just match those two lines together and they stick. The other nice thing about this is the template sheets are translucent. If you're doing this over a pieced block, you can see exactly where those pieces are um, and line that up um, regardless of whether your block was stitched with perfect scant quarter inch seam allowances or it's a little wonky. So you'll be able to, to tell how the design will land on it from the template sheet. Then we're going to say, before we start, you're going to sandwich the quilt layers. Um, I, you'll put your back, backing right side down, and then you're going to put your batting on top. I like to open up my batting and let it relax a little bit before I do this so that, you know, the wrinkles come out of it and it's easier to, to smooth out. Um, and then you'll put your quilt top, in this case, we're just using fabric, over the top of it right side up. You want to leave at least two inches of batting and backing fabric on all four sides um, of the top fabric. So in this case, um, I didn't need to leave too much extra because it was just fabric. But if you're working with the quilt, then you've got probably quarter inch seam allowances on there if you don't have you know, some kind of border or binding all the way around. And you want to be able to quilt up to you know, a quarter of in an inch. So your batting and backing work as a leader cloth for you. Um, and you can always add more on if you find you don't have enough to sew a piece of fabric on there and that will provide you with some additional leader cloth so that when you hoop, you can get to the area you want to stitch. Uh, then I do, this is what I always do for embroidery in the hoop. Um, I spray base mine. I prefer that because it helps keep the three layers together when I'm hooping. And that's the critical thing about hooping um, a quilt sandwich. We don't need stabilizer because quilting designs with two layers of fabric and batting, you've got enough stability there. You don't need added stabilizer for a quilting design. Now, if you were going to stitch um, a fill design or an applique in a block, I would do that before I quilt it and use the appropriate stabilizer for that design and then put it on uh, with just the batting and backing to quilt that part of it. Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. Okay. Feel free to interrupt me if there's any questions that come up along the way. <laughs> Don't you worry, Tamara. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Then you may want to mark the quilt. This is really more important when you're doing just a cloth quilt like this one, rather than um, with, with a pieced quilt, you really don't need to mark it because you can see where your design should go because of piecing on it. But if you're doing a whole cloth quilt, I usually mark the very centers to start off with. And then I may draw additional lines if I feel like 
um, not staying square as I go across. Um, but it's pretty easy to do once you get started. And we'll talk about how that process works um, in just a minute. So then you can position the templates onto, um, and I usually like to print out two templates. I think I forgot to mention that earlier. That way I can see where the next one's gonna fall, kind of leapfrog them, if you will. Uh, right here, I'm positioning the template on uh, the bottom corner of my quilt, of the center. And I do like to work from the center out. The nice thing about that is if, you end up with any ripples, you can push them, any bulk that builds up in there, it can be pushed to the outer edges where then you'll trim it off when it's all said and done. So if you start in the center, you can start in the very center, you could do it in one of the quarters, you know, of that center that you've marked, just depends on your quilt and how many times you're gonna repeat that design across. If you're doing edge to edge quilting, uh, you may repeat that design multiple times. I still like to start in the center so that the center of my quilt kind of looks organized and then work out to each side and up to the top and down to the bottom. Uh, so I'll start in the center here. And actually this picture is turned uh, a little, oh well, it doesn't matter. Uh, so I put the second template on above the first one, and I've lined up where those two intersect and measured from my straight line. So at least I'm starting off straight uh, and getting lining up the center lines of the template and the connecting lines of the template. And you can see how transparent these are um, on the fabric. So it's very easy to see marks underneath there and where the template should be placed. So here you can see in more detail positioning where in the circles the it matches up with the ending lines and the center lines so that you get a good straight uh, vertical line going there. Then hooping. If you have a template for your hoop, I recommend you use it. Um, and you can lay that over where you're going to hoop and then slide your hoop underneath and get it perfectly straight so that when you take it to the machine, you know it's straight in the hoop and you just have to find the center of that first design. I also encourage you, um, which we're not gonna go into great detail here about all the different machine features for placement, but I encourage you to use those as well. Maybe you don't have to hoop it quite as straight or worry about having a template to hoop it with, if you've got pinpoint placement or precise positioning on a pop or um, the camera or projector on a baby lock or a brother machine or any of the other tools that other machines may have to help you line things up straight. Your hoops also help you because they tend to have marks on them. So if you have a straight line drawn on your quilt or your piecing, it's pretty easy to get it straight in the hoop. Loosen the hoop and press down to secure the hoop in place, tighten the hoop, but do not tug on the fabric because then you're creating different tensions within your hoop. It may not look like that top fabric is drum tight, but as long as it's relaxed in the hoop, you'll be fine and it will stitch out perfectly through all three layers. When you start stretching and tugging on the fabric once it's hoop, that's when you're gonna run into problems and get, um, folds in the backing or things like that. Then we put the hoop on the machine and load the design. Um, you can use the centering tools uh, that your machine has like, that we discussed uh, before to center it. Then I recommend you move to the first stitch. Now, if you don't know where the first stitch is, if you have software that you use to print the templates, that also almost always, at least all the ones I know, have a, a redraw function so you can see where the design starts and where it ends. And go to that first stitch, drop your needle to make sure that you're matching the first stitch, okay? The needle doesn't lie. It tells you exactly where that first stitch is gonna go. So um, that way you know if your design needs to be rotated or anything like that. 
And if you don't have software, Tamara, then on your machine, you would use your stitch forward backwards function. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Many All machines you- will, will let you, um, you know, either with a little plus minus and your like your broken stitch tools, essentially, to move through the design, you would just go to the first stitch. Yes. Yeah. Go to the first stitch of your design and drop it. Um, and depending on your connection point, if you are connecting to the last stitch of the previous design, then you may want to drop your needle there to connect. So it's, um, you know, which depends on which way you're moving, if you're going to go to the first or the last stitch. I'll try and explain that better in just a minute. Okay. Now, before you press go, remove the printed template because you'll want to use it again and it doesn't look pretty in your quilt and it's very hard to pick out. <laughs> so don't stitch through it. Um, rock your needle down and pull up the bobbin thread and pull both threads to the side. The reason for doing this is to avoid having those little knots and goobers on the back of your quilt. Unless you've got a really... Um, wild print on the back, those things show. So you want your back to look as nice as the front and pull your bobbin, thread up, hold them, stitch a few stitches, then you can pause it and trim those away because the stitches will be locked. Um, If you so desire, you could leave them and bury them later if that's something you enjoy doing, Um, but it's not necessary. So stitch the design and then uh, trim away the thread tails. Okay, <laughs> not not where I want it. Okay, so then you will just continuing continue embroidering. Um, you're going to stitch each embroidery design as you go through, and you're going to match the connection points. Um, so when you drop that first stitch or the last stitch, wherever it's connecting to the previous design, travel through your design and make sure that that's going to meet it exactly. The template usually gets you right on it or at least really close, but dropping the needle will confirm that that stitch is gonna stitch exactly where you want it. So wherever you're connecting that design, travel through it using, you know, the broken stitch feature, um, however, you know, your machine works and to that either first or last stitch and drop your needle and you will be assured of perfect placement. So when you're done and the quilting is complete, you're gonna trim off the excess batting uh, from the outside edges. You can bind it as desired. On this one, I used a ribbon and went around it and then bound it. So I had a little bit of a, a red edge there for it to look at. So questions. Um, I don't see any questions in the comments, but if anybody has any, that would be a great place to put them. Um, Yes. As of now, are you done with your PowerPoint, Tamara? Uh, I'm just going through the products that I used. Okay, then I'll leave it up. I just didn't want to leave you there. Um, Okay. For now, let's just keep on keeping on. All right. So, staple stick template sheets. These are awesome. Uh, There's 25 to a package. You can use them on an inkjet or a laser printer. Uh, Cut out your template, cut around it, and it's great for auditioning designs on anything, especially quilts, but also on garments and clothing. You know, make sure that your design is going to land where you want it to. With it being sticky, it's going to stay put through hooping and everything until you're ready to, you know, press start. Then that's when you want to take it off before you press go. And as I said, it's translucent, so you can see uh, the fabric underneath or the quilt block underneath. There's no residue left on the fabric. Uh, I just peel mine off. I stick it on the corner of my sewing machine and um, then use it again. So I have two questions for you. I do have some questions. (laughs) So I had a a question actually earlier, um, and Kelly just pointed out, thank you, Kelly, um, about organ needles. So. Uh Someone was wondering, so she says she has organ needles and it doesn't say that they are embroidery needles on her package. Does organ make only embroidery needles or do they make all sorts of needles? Organ makes all sorts of needles. Um, there is a number on the 
package. Yeah, I put you on the spot. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you did. There is a number on the package and you can look that up. Um, if it's on our website, we have, we don't have the whole line of organ needles. We just do use embroidery needles, um, but they do come in ballpoint and sharp and in multiple sizes. So yep. you could check on our website or go to Oregon's website and um, see what kind of needle that is. Um, I have that same issue. <laughs> um, I haven't memorized what the codes are on those. So I write it on the back when I get it. I write it on the little package. So I know, you know, it's a sharp. They also come in titanium, which is great for quilting. That's um, hard. Yeah. Um, really the like other that. question we got, if if you, if I can ask, is sure. what your thoughts are on handling the bulk of a quilt when quilting in the hoop, which I think is uh, a great question. Yes, that is a great question. So one of the things that you should do that I should add to this PowerPoint <laughs> is once you've got your design pulled up and you've checked, you know, your points before you take that template off trace the design or check the four corners of the design. Machines will allow you to see, you know, if you're in the hoop and where and all that. You can kind of see where it's going to stitch out. Uh, do that to check for movement of the quilt, that, that that hoop can move freely without being tugged on by uh, the bulk of the quilt. If I'm doing a large quilt, I will often, um, well, let me start with the smaller ones. Smaller ones, um, as much as you can roll up under the arm, you know, it's usually, you know, if you can get halfway, that's great. If you can't, then I will not put the batting in my whole quilt. I will do the center and um, do a big section in the center. So what's rolling up under the arm of my quilt is just the backing and the top of the quilt. So I've got more room to get further <laughs> over. Then puddle the rest of it. You know, you can even take, you know, put off the space around your table, um, which is usually the hardest part of getting ready to quilt. Um, and you can even put your ironing board up in front of your table for when you're working at the top of the quilt and all the bulks down in front of you. And you can adjust that to the height of the table. So that gives you a little bit more room, but you can still reach over it. So a lot of the same concepts as if you were free motioning, you just need to try and support and reduce the amount of weight. I know with my, you know, I have a Bernina at home and it has a, a removable table. I make mm -hmm. sure that if I, if I'm quilting in the hoop, I put that table on, yes. you know, anything I can do to sort of reduce the weight of the quilt, um, uh, you know, however that can be. Sometimes it's adding an extra yeah. table. Sometimes it's sort of clipping and pinning, but it's, you know, right. just like free motioning, quilting in the hoop is a little bit of a juggling act when it comes to doing something very large. I don't know about you, Tamara, yes. but if I have a quilt, like a quilt, you know, like a king size or a, even a queen, those are things that I share with someone else to quilt. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I yeah. say, hello, my favorite local long armor, would you like to quilt my quilt for me? Yes, I have done that as well. Um, although I'm not, um, I have done a queen size quilt. You are very um, brave. Well, you know, once you get the knack of it and you get a feel for it, um, and you can tell, you know, when you hoop, once you get going, when you first start, you want to look at the back and just make sure you haven't got, you know, wrinkles in there, but you can generally feel them, especially if you have the table, um, on your machine or you have one of those nice tables where your machine sits down in there really mm -hmm. flush. Um, you can feel if you have any puckers in there, you know, any buildup on your uh, hooping. And I always look at the back of my hoop yep. before I put it back on the machine. So, so start with a small quilt. If you've never done quilting in the hoop, table runner is a great, a great way to start. Mm -hmm. Then maybe a baby quilt, you know, work your way up. I, I think it's very ambitious to start with a giant quilt. I mean, there are oh, those yes. of you who are totally comfortable with that. But for me, I know I like to start when I try a new technique with a smaller version of, <laughs> of the technique. Oh, absolutely. But, you know, perfect your technique a little bit, get used to it. In fact, if you go to the lesson on um, basics and by Urban Elements, the um it talks about just doing a a placement what i would recommend on that is do it like six times as big 
and do it all over quilting. And so that gives you like, you know, a little baby quilt size maybe. And then you can cut it up into six placemats when you're done. Um, so you haven't wasted your time on it, but it's a nice project to, to learn. Absolutely. All right. Your next product that you've used. Sorry to derail you there. Oh, no, that's fine. I love interruptions. Um, 505 Temporary Spray, spray Adhesive. This is what I use to fuse uh, temporarily my uh, top and backing to the batting. I like this because I can, if I do get a, a wrinkle in there, or I need to smooth it out, some excess bulk, I can just pull it off and put it back on. And if I need to add a little more spray, I can. Um, it's easy to reposition and it's odorless, colorless, stainless, flawless, acid free. And it doesn't, it doesn't come up your needle. I'm going to, and it's easier to not get over spray because you're working on a big surface. So, um, you know, if you just want to spray the center of it, you know, really to begin with, just whatever helps to ease, uh, make the handling the bulk of the quilt a little easier. Yeah, um, the design that we used on the uh, polka dot quilt was from Quilting by Design by Jessica Schick. This is a cool collection. There are 50 continuous single run quilting designs, all shapes and sizes. There's a spider web in there. There's lots of really fun stuff. It's a great collection. Um, and it also has more detailed instructions on how to do that quilt included in there. Um, for those of you who missed when, or did we talk about that? We did. Where the instructions are. We did. The, yep. uh, yeah. When you say preview sewing information, the project instructions are always at the end of that PDF. So you can download any of these, even if you're not going to use those designs, you can download it and, um, or look at it and see how, how to do it. Um, again, basics by urban elements that placemat instructions are in there. That one has a lot of really cool quilting designs as well. There's 30 designs and those are both in single run and in triple run. So if you really want them to pop, use the triple run. If you want it to blend, blend in more, like if you're putting it over a piece top, then use the single run. And then Tula Pink, um, her, hers are just fun and crazy and, you know, Tula. Um, very cute designs. And uh, most of them, well, uh, some of them are single, like the, the head of the animal there, raccoon, I think. Um, and uh, single designs, but other ones are connecting. There's a lot of connecting designs in there, like the leaves on the side. So enjoy those. Those are just a few of my favorites. And that's all for my PowerPoint, Carrie. Fantastic. That was fantastic. Um, I I learn something every time I listen to you guys, the, our educators um, talk. So thank you very much, Tamara. Uh, looks like we don't have any major questions. Um, you addressed, uh, we have actually a question about tension. You talked a little bit about tension earlier um, that you want to just adjust your tension to make sure that it's balanced um, and to thread your machine so that it is for sewing and not embroidery to get more of a balanced. Um, exactly balance tension perfect yeah so it doesn't pull to the back um it's not gonna it, it's not gonna be the end of the world if you use an embroidery tension um but it just looks better i think with um with that not being buried in the middle somewhere instead of yeah i you know i i used to teach a, a class like this when i was at, in the store and you know it's we want our quilts to look perfect and we want them to be as good as they can be. But, you know, most of the time we are not submitting these quilts to a grand quilt show for judging. Right. You know, these are quilts for our, our parents, our siblings, our grandkids. You know, you, you they will not notice your learning. So, you know, we right. have to be we have to be soft with ourselves. You know, right. we are doing things as gifts for people who love us and it's OK for it to be as good as it can be, you know. Right. Don't beat yourself up. <laughs> exactly. It's exactly. a, learning, have a fun learning experience. Yeah, have fun with it. I mean, quilting designs are fun. They're easy. They they go to, I mean, it's 
there's just so much variety to choose from there that you can find a look for anything that you want to do. And remember, you know, that beautiful baby quilt that you make, nobody at the baby shower is going to notice, you know, your little imperfection. And while you're stitching it, remember, the child will probably throw up on it. So don't <laughs> wet it. Um, Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Tamara. I uh, really appreciate your time. And then tomorrow, um, tell us about what you are going to be, um, what you're going to be doing with us tomorrow. Oh, well, um, you got me started on quilting designs. And when I get started on them, I can't stop. So I'm going to show you some really fun stuff that you can do um, with quilt designs. Cool. So essentially quilting in the hoop, uh, 102, the advanced yes. lesson tomorrow. So we yeah. will uh, look forward to that. So thank you very, very much. I'm going to okay. show everyone really quickly just how to find quilting designs on our website. So um, I just, so that they don't have any questions, but for those of you out there in the world, really quickly, I appreciate you guys sticking with us this long. This has been a really um, in-depth conversation. So, you know, it's it's fantastic that you guys are all still here. So really quickly on our website, um, if you hover over embroidery designs, we talked yesterday about how you can shop by artist, but you can also shop by technique. So if you shop by technique and go to quilting designs, you'll see all of our quilting designs. And you can sort those on the side here, however you'd like. And, and as a note, uh, Tamara was talking about triple run versus single run design. You can see here, this one is listed, which happens to be free. So that's a good one to try as a triple run. So um, typically if it doesn't say that it's a triple run, that means it's a single run, um, but there's tons of great options here. Um, pretty much something for every, every occasion. And very quickly before I let you guys go, I want you to know we are doing a really fun thing this month. It started today. We are doing a $10 daily deal of a collection every day on our website. So if you head to a embroidery online every day, it will change. So today, let's see what our $10 daily deal is. Oh, I love this collection. So today um, you can download Kaleidoscope of Feathers for $10. That's normally $30. This is a great collection. I love these. There's actually some freestanding feathers in here. Um, you could make a, a mask if you wanted. But every day that changes. So make sure you come and you check on Embroidery Online every day and then click on the daily deal and you will be able to uh, see what the daily deal of the day is. It was a mouthful. So thank you very, very much for all of you for joining us. Uh, uh, Tamara and I, this was a blast. We will see you again tomorrow, um, awesome. 1 p.m. Central Time. Um, it will be on our public Facebook pages, our OESD page, our Scissor Tail Stitches page, and then will be posted on the OESD YouTube channel as well after we're done. So thank you, thank you, thank you. It is always lovely to spend time with you. Happy stitching, and we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>